Hey guys, today I will talk about artificial intelligence applied to the ray casting game I have been developing for some time here on the channel. When I think about artificial intelligence, the first things that come to mind are neural networks, machine learning and stuff like that. But when you talk about artificial intelligence in games, in most cases much simpler methods are used and they work relatively well. But if you are interested in using neural networks for artificial intelligence in a game, leave a comment. I particularly think the idea is very interesting. Maybe not practical, but who knows. Back to our ray casting game, for now we have very dumb enemies. All they know how to do is to walk forward. And when they hit a wall, they change direction and go on with their lives. That is, they don't represent any danger to the player. In my ray tracing game, by tracing maze, the intelligence of the enemies was also very limited. If the enemy saw the player, he will go towards the player and start attacking until he dies. This works reasonably well. The player is forced to defend himself, but the enemy doesn't have much personality. So in this game, which I haven't decided a name yet, I wanted the enemies to react to the player's actions and the environment, being able to attack or flee depending on the situation, and also to work as a team, something that feels more natural. So I try to imagine the game from the enemy's point of view. He basically has two goals, to survive and to kill the player. To achieve these goals he has to make decisions or perform actions based on his perceptions, so it can be modeled as a function, with different inputs and outputs. The perceptions of an enemy that I will consider here are First, vision. Similar to the player, he has a field of view of 60 degrees in a range of 6 blocks. Secondly, hearing. If the player uses his sword within 3 blocks of an enemy, he will get his attention, even when the enemy cannot see the player. Third, the enemy's own health, which is very important for survival. And fourth, the presence of other enemies, that is, an enemy knows how many other enemies are around to help to kill the player. In the end I decided to combine the health and the amount of friends into a fear factor. So a monster feels fear when his health is low and he doesn't have many friends to help him. And what can a monster do? What actions can it perform? First, it can walk forward, which it already does all the time. Second, it can rotate, for example in the direction of the player or in the opposite direction, or even in a random direction. Third, he can attack the player, that is, if he is close enough. To better control the enemy's actions, I decided to work with three different states. Normal, when he has no knowledge of the player's location. Aggressive, when he knows where the player is and has no fear. And defensive, when he knows where the player is but it is afraid. So now we just need to pass this logic to the game code. First of all, I added a variable to store the player's health. If it is less than zero, it's game over. In the enemy's array, I had to add three more fields. One for the monster's health, another for the state, and one more for the cooldown of the attacks. I will also be using a map of enemies, which is reset in each frame. And then we can create a function for the enemy intelligence, which receives the player's position, the array of enemies, the walls and enemy maps, the sword sprite index, the absolute time and the player's health. First I will make a loop that goes through all the enemies and marks their positions and the adjacent cells on the enemy map. This results in a kind of enemy heat map, which they use to know if there are other monsters around. Then I make a new loop that goes through all the enemies, but it will only analyze the enemies that still have health and of those only 10%, because I don't need to run the logic in each frame for each one of them. With each enemy's data, I calculate the distance to the player and check the amount of friends. If the player is not in the same cell as the enemy, I count the enemies that are near him too. Then I add the friends to the health value to know if the monster is scared. And to differentiate between zombies and skeletons, I made the zombies less scared. Starting from the normal state, if the enemy is within 6 blocks of the player, I will calculate the angle to the player to check if it is inside the field of view. If it is or if the sword has been activated within the range of 3 blocks, I calculate a ray to verify that there is no wall between the monster and the player. Only if if it passes the test and is not afraid, it goes to the aggressive state and will turn towards the player. 
If it is afraid, it turns in the opposite direction and enters the defensive state. In the aggressive state, the angle to the player is calculated and it is verified if the enemy is in range to attack. It also has to verify if the cooldown has passed. And then he attacks. It dates the cooldown and decreases the player's health. The damage of the attack decreases a little when there are many enemies around the player, because then there is no space for everyone to attack together. If the enemy is afraid, he turns to the defensive state, where again he checks if he is still afraid, otherwise he goes back to the normal state. If he is afraid, he turns to the opposite direction of the player. At the end it saves the updated values for the direction and monster state. To make things a little more interesting, I made the enemy's speed change according to their state, here in the sprite sorting function. In the normal state, they are very slow, as if they were walking through the maze. In the aggressive state, they have a 50% increase in speed, and when they are fleeing, in the defensive state, they have a 100% increase in speed over the normal state. I also added the ability for the player to attack more than one enemy at once, which helps a lot when there are many enemies on top of him, and also pushes the enemies back a bit. In the end, I was happy with the logic of the intelligence, but I took a long time to make some fine adjustments to try to make the game more balanced, like how much health each enemy should have, how much damage each attack delivers, or at which point an enemy gets scared, etc. And as you may have seen, I also implemented the vertical angle change in the player's view. In the next video I want to add sounds to the game, because sounds have a very important role to give rhythm and more emotion to the game. The code is already available on my GitHub, link on the video description. If you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in the comments. And if you want to follow the next development of this and future projects, maybe subscribe to the channel. All in all, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.